This is my special place, my temple, my favorite viewpoint. I come here, I think and meditate a bit on my life. Who can say? One day I could be in a place where I look down on my land like this. One day I could be a man of means. One day I could, how can I say it, make it to the top. Sometimes I feel, I don't know, bad because sometimes I feel they are killing me. Sometimes I feel like I won't be coming back. Sometimes I see things, accidents. I don't know, it's bizarre. I don't know how to describe it, but that's how it is. I come here, I unwind a bit, I look at that, I feel at peace, at ease. I breathe in the pure air and I say, damn, this is my Potosi. Where will it lead me? Seven o'clock in the morning at the Kampatosi Mine. Five to six thousand miners grouped into private claim cooperatives are exploiting the deposits in Cerro Rico. I was very young when I started working in the mine. The very first time I went down, I felt very nervous. I didn't know what to do. It all looked half broken down. It was total darkness. There was no light. There was nothing. It was bizarre. It was so strange to me. I told myself, my papa goes down here all the time. How does he feel? I felt weighed down. I felt different. Each time I enter the mine, I can feel the cold coming into my heart. You find yourself going down into the depths of the earth and it feels like you're entering a tomb. You fear for your life. It crushes you, like it's squeezing all the juice from your body. And you're falling into the void. That's how you feel. I am the head of the friendship team. Our job is to go where nobody else ever goes. Alberto, driller. Carlos, winchman. Walter, assistant winchman. Eduardo, assistant driller. Candido Chesquiri. We have come down the shaft on the rope and we will begin the extraction. We reworked the old tunnels like this one that have been abandoned for I don't know how many years. 
We get the extraction going. We look for ore. When we come in here, there isn't enough air. We aren't able to breathe very well because it's blocked. When we've cleared all this away, the air will come in, and it'll be fresh and calm. When the air comes, we're okay, it's great. You have to be careful about where you work. This could collapse. You have to know how to check the area. There are danger zones. The friendship team reworks an abandoned tunnel. Those who worked it before might have missed a good vein. In tunnels without ventilation, the temperature can be upwards of 35 degrees. Thousands of tons of soil and rock are extracted using manpower. For me, it's as though, with every step I take, I need to stay on a path that will keep me alive. With every breath, with every sigh, every moment of fatigue, or when I breathe in the air, in humid dust in the mind. I can't explain the feeling. Only those who live it know how it is. It's 4 p.m. The working day is done at Compotosi. Today, the friendship team didn't find anything, but tomorrow, who knows? With luck, tomorrow the team could discover a major vein, and they'll all be rich. Next one. The salaries are paid at the end of each week. The miners are the best paid unskilled laborers in Bolivia. Eduardo, right? I work for the Compatosi Cooperative. I'm on my father's team, Don Pedro Mamani. I'm with my brother Alberto, who is my foreman. My father always taught us the importance of working, of moving forward. For many, working here is, let's say, humiliating. When they leave, they say, I work in an office. But it's just a lie. In reality, my brother and I feel proud when we walk down the street. It's fine. I'm a miner, proud in my heart. Cerro Rico is the largest silver deposit ever discovered on the surface of the planet. It has been continuously mined since the time of the Spanish conquest. At 4,700 meters, Potosi is one of the highest cities in the world. Its 120,000 inhabitants earn their livelihoods from the mines of Cerro Rico. <laughs> My name is Pedro Mamani. This is my family. This is my wife. 
my oldest son, the younger one, my sister-in-law, my grandson, my nephews and nieces. That's the family. You remember that accident? Mm. I was stacking up the sacks. The winch slipped and he fell. All the way down. The accident was fatal. We just decided to take a quick break to rest a moment. We were all along there. Rope! A voice yelled out. We saw him crash down right next to us. He sat there. And his guts came out here. Terrifying. <laughs> in Cerro, I once saw a guy come out in a bucket. He fit inside of a bucket. He went in there like he was dough. He went in like that. There wasn't much left. They put him in a bucket, the bucket in a car. Look at that little pig. He looks like you. No, I'm not a pig. He does. Look at him. I'll look, but I'm no little pig. Well, I think he looks like you. Look, babe. A little house like that one. I believe in things like this. Here, for a few pesos, illusion merchants sell the dream of a better life. We buy a house, a Hummer. It's nice, but not that color. You know some of the Compatosi have one. Alberto Alave, the boss, he has three or four Hummers. What is it that you would like, sir? We would like to buy a Hummer. Both of your hands, please. For good luck. And miss, you put both of your hands in. What is it you want, a Hummer? This Hummer, we will ask that it becomes a reality. In the name of St. Christopher, patron of travelers, I will also ask for you both the official papers of the Hummer. For good luck. What else would you like? A little house for the young lady? We'll need a house, right? What kind of a house? A lovely house. They're all lovely. Which one would you like? The one with the garage there. And where would you like to have this house, sir? In Cochabamba, Santa Cruz, in Bolivia, or a foreign land? Where will it be? In Potosi. Very good. I'm from Potosi. Very well, in Potosi. I'm watering the money from the lottery, a loan, an inheritance, at this moment, and for the whole family. With good luck, and at the right time that you will buy it, a thousand times that you will buy it, that this be a good augury. And now a little kiss for both of you, and that's it. I love you. Now we clap, for good luck. And that's it. 30, 35, plus 100, 165. 165. We worked without earning a cent, nothing. We told ourselves we'll hit one someday. We never found it, never found it, for years. And the vein was just behind us. It was a huge vein. My brother and I, we earned $300,000 per day. 
during six years of work. We were happy, not for us, but for the cooperative, especially for the workers. We've taken care of their families. We've taken care of their children, of their schools. We've taken care of their health. Today, the Campotosi Cooperative has everything. A medical station, a library, all the installations, the big machines. We have everything. And this coming year, we will do better. The profits will be even higher, because God wills it. The silver ore extracted from Cerro Rico is treated in local foundries. First it passes through the crusher and is ground down. Even though the deposits in Cerro Rico are among the richest in the world, they have to work thousands of tons of rock to extract an ingot weighing a few dozen grams. The silver is used in jewelry, in plate work, and more and more in industry, especially electrics and electronics because of its excellent conductivity. Its superior durability and resistance also means it is often used for electric contacts on computer keyboards. These multiple applications explain why silver is more and more sought after. Its rarity makes it the object of intense speculation on the international market. It sometimes climbs up as fast or even faster than gold. When I enter the mine, I feel a little bit, I don't know, it's a feeling of fear. But it's also a great feeling of joy, just realizing that, after all, this is my job. I should be proud. I'm a miner, from a family of miners. When the time comes to work, I forget everything. I think about my job, and there's no fear. I mean, after all, we are miners. This is what we do. If we let worries take over, we won't be able to do our job properly. The moment he enters the mine, each miner must swallow his fear. His dreams of wealth, the house, the hummer, the money, help him to confront the appalling work conditions and the ever-present danger of death. In the underground world, Tio reigns. Tio, the capricious devil who decides who lives and dies, who gets rich or fails. The devil has his vices. He likes to smoke, so he must be offered cigarettes. He also likes coca leaves and booze. The first time I went down in the mine, I didn't know about Tio. I didn't know there was anyone there to protect us. He looks like a devil, but for us, he's someone who protects us from accidents, who watches over us and helps us to find new veins. He's the lord of the miners here. He's Tio, the blessed devil. My papa taught me that I should believe in him. The miners constantly chew coca leaves. The sacred plant of the high mountain Indians is a powerful stimulant that helps them to overcome the pain and lack of oxygen in the mountains. If the devil is watching over them, why are the miners so preoccupied with safety? Why do the owners spend all of that money buying the machines and modern equipment? Con 
cuando entras con toda fe, when we come in full of hope, we think that today will be the day. We'll find a big vein and lots of work will follow. And pay us well. I move forward, only thinking about my companions. I see them smiling, that they're happy to go to work. They give me the strength to carry on. I'm not the only one who suffers. They give me the courage to keep working. We need to shore up the tunnels. Need to change that, it's too top heavy. It's getting jammed up. Look at that. It's no good at all here. We need to change that wood. We need to get something more solid in there, like pine or cedar. Good support wood. Okay, boys, let's go. Carlos, Candido, on the pulley. Eduardo, Alberto, in the tunnel. Right now, I'm an assistant driller, and I want to be a driller, like my brother Alberto. He's training me to move up a category. Get a good grip on the bar, because the head is crappy. You've got to keep it straight. You hold it tight. If you don't keep it straight, it'll get stuck. And when it's twisted, we can't get it out. So avoid that. Let's avoid that, okay? Let's finish up these holes. One, two, three, four, one more and we're good. <laughs> the pneumatic hammers are powered by compressed air produced on the surface. At 4,800 meters, deep in tunnels with no ventilation, there is almost no oxygen. The miners suffocate. With all their strength, they suck in air saturated with silica dust that encrusts their lungs and turns them into stone. I earn enough, I'm not complaining, but also, on the inside, I'm already dead. Inside me, it's killing my body. I'll get the famous miner's lung. There's nothing worse. You swallow dust, you swallow arsenic, you start feeling bad all the time, you start to vomit up blood, and to pee blood too, and then you end up dead. Either you quit because you have lots of money, or they carry you out in a coffin. The dynamite sticks are fabricated by hand in Potosi.
the detonating fuses as well. The quality is poor and unpredictable. I can't breathe with this crap. How's it going? Are you okay? Getting tired? Hammered? Is this going to take a while? No, it won't take long, maybe three minutes. Three minutes max. Man, the dust! This dust is really hellish. Does that thing protect you? It stops a little bit from coming in, but overall, no. Overall, it doesn't really help. It doesn't keep it all out, that's for sure. The way it is down here, we're breathing in dust. We're full of it. It's no joke. When that stuff gets in your lungs, it stays there. Damn. The Laguna is a crater lake where the miners sometimes come to swim on a Sunday. We call it El Baño de Inca because Emperor Huayna Capac came here bathing to soothe the skin problem he had. Breathe. Don't move. Okay. You can get dressed. Your heart is doing fine. The lungs are also good. But you do have a few small calcifications. So you should be very careful about the mind. What's that? That? Those are traces of an infection. A bit of a cold or bronchitis. So I don't have... No, 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 no. These are the lungs here. Everything you see in black. Fine, fine. Well ventilated. They're like that? Your lungs are just fine. But you are very young to be going into the mine. 22 years old. In five years or a little more, you will have silicosis, which is serious. Silicosis won't heal. It can't be treated, not like tuberculosis, which is why you need to take good care of yourself. Eat healthy foods, don't drink alcohol, get some exercise. It's essential that the lungs get well oxygenated. How often should I get a checkup like this? Every three months. Every three months. In three months, we'll know if the disease has advanced? Yes. 
mejor. It's better. The first symptom is what? You start coughing? Yes, you start coughing. My love. It's my x-ray. He told me it's good. I don't have anything. Nothing? Nothing. Just a few symptoms of tuberculosis. At 4,700 meters, the air is thin, breathing is difficult. The rich in Potosi all have a hacienda in the plains, 2,300 meters lower. The dream of a miner in Potosi is to own a property like this one. In the country, for his health, for his family. Ever since I was young, when I was 14 years old, I dreamt of this. Now I'm older, and I have it. I have the honor of providing work for so many people. I'm very proud. That is the lake. Today we employ 350 people in all, so many families that share with us, and we also share with them, as their bosses, we take care of them. We make sure that every Sunday there is something in the basket of the miners' wives. We pay them on Saturday, so they'll have time to do their shopping. We feel like slaves to the bosses. We get here tired, we leave here tired. We want to get paid. The bosses don't even come out to see how we're working. This is the life we live every day. We demand, we insist, but they never listen to us. We kill ourselves down there working with pick and spade, with the sweat of our brows, and they sit there without knowing or understanding how we feel. The work is hard. It's not easy. The boss should know this. Don Alberto was a miner himself. Sometimes money changes people. We're very special people. It's a sacrifice to go down in the mine like this. Down here day and night, from 6 in the morning till 6 at night? Damn it. It kept us waiting for two weeks. One day, two days. We'll pay you tomorrow. Another idiot comes. We'll pay you tomorrow. Another dope comes along. We'll pay you tomorrow. None of these jerks has any balls. Even the boss's son. He always promises and never does anything. Man of his word, man of his word. Yeah, right. Nothing happens. They're never going to pay us.
Rumor has it that since the arrival of the Spanish in 1545, the mines have killed eight million men, either by accident or illness. The thing is, you still lack a bit of strength. Physicality, stoutness. You know, the machine is heavy, right? What if I drill it up high in the chimney? You're not strong enough for that yet. If you were handling a piston, that'd be different. Two or three more holes and it'll be good. The main thing that bothers me are the shocks. I've got cramps here and here. The first thing is knowing how to start. Otherwise, you dance around like you were. We can usually manage to drill 60 holes. It's hard. Some people piss themselves. We could all die. 60 holes. The veins we generally extract here tend to be zinc. It's a nice vein of zinc, a really nice one. We also do a fair amount of bronze. The bronze like we see here, like we get, there's a fair amount of it. And we also get some silver. There's not a whole lot. We get some little veins, but there is silver. The material that we use here is completely worn out, so it doesn't work well, it functions badly. So we stress out and yell a lot. Sometimes we'll even hit a co-worker because of mechanical or technical failures. Material that is worn out, men whose nerves are worn down. Handmade and unstable dynamite. Unreliable detonating fuses. The devil rubs his hands. When handling the material, if you create a shock, 
If you slam it, one false move, it could explode. You could lose fingers or a hand. The explosion could also take you by surprise. And the result of that is death. Because that explosion is terrible. It destroys rock. Just imagine what it could do to a body. It totally destroy it. When are they going to pay me? I just hope I'm still alive when they pay me. My pants are all torn. Yeah. You see? Yeah. I'll take them back to the house. I'll wash them and burn them. Monday, I'll come back with different pants. Did you like working in the mine when you were a boy? When I was little? No, I didn't like it. It scared me. I always felt like a rock was going to fall on me. I was scared. It's dangerous in here. They could make it safer. This is how we relax on weekends. Because we need to do some sports. To strengthen the body. All week long we're stressed out. A little exercise gets the dust out. The members of the cooperative are having a match today. The wagon men and winchmen against administrators and drillers. You can recognize them because they're not drunk. Look at him. The referee is drunk. Totally soused. <laughs> 
It's a friendly match between my mining team and others that aren't from here. Okay, let's go. She was cute, yeah? que nos faltaron la última clase, que no nos alcanzó el tiempo. Por favor, anoten. Ejemplo 4, 3. Ejemplo 4, 3. Ejemplo 4, 3. Para levantar... Yo estudio en la universidad. I study at Thomas Frias University. Mechanical and Electrical Engineering. La verdad es que me siento feliz por estar haciendo estos de... I'm happy to study at the university. It's a great opportunity for me to break away from the family tradition of always being a miner. Being a miner is the best, but I'm studying so I can be a better person. That's what my papa wants. Since we were young, he's always taught us that we should become professionals and not follow the tradition that we have in the family. The truth is that it frightens me that my father is in the mine so much. I'm always afraid that one day he won't come back. I know I'll earn less money as a technician, but my family will feel proud of me. And plus, that way I might live longer. Ahí están todas las constelaciones. At 22, Eduardo has barely finished adolescence. He has dreams, but it's not easy to escape a destiny that's mapped out. It will take tenacity to become a technician, the courage to step away from a strong and united lifestyle that imposes its own laws. Sueño que yo tengo. 
My greatest dream is that people recognize us for who we really are. That we show that by working and studying, we can accomplish many things. I want to show that the reality of the mine is not a humiliation. Being a miner is a point of pride for all of us. To all those who have listened to me and seen what my life is like, take a look. Dirty hands, a sweaty face, and green teeth. Like they say, once a miner, always a miner, and that's forever. An overproud miner, right up until death, separates me from this world.